This whole video series has been about one thing, the importance of liturgy, how practices, habits, and routines change us and shape our identity. Over the past 50 years in our modern evangelical churches, we have gotten rid of most of the elements of the traditional Christian liturgy. But when we did that, we created a vacuum. And you know what they say about vacuums. They never stay empty for long. So a bunch of different practices and habits came into our Sunday services when we weren't looking. And not all of these were good. Some of them change us and shape our identities in the wrong direction. They don't point us to God, and some of them even turn us away from God or create in our imaginations these false pictures of who he is. One of these false pictures well, the Bible describes an active God, but our modern liturgies present us with a passive God, though perhaps attentive, let's say passively attentive. Think about it. We sing, we pray, we remember, we partake in communion, we decide, and then we are baptized. And God, he watches and perhaps nods approvingly. In traditional Christian liturgies, God does stuff. He calls. He welcomes. He pardons. He illuminates. He speaks. He grants. He draws unto himself. He gives. And he sends. And between all these things that God does in the traditional liturgy, we do things too, in response to his actions. The whole traditional liturgy is a dialogue between God and his people. I have no problem with changing up the liturgy to make it more contemporary, but we shouldn't make it more pagan. In this video series, we have looked at most of the elements of the traditional Christian liturgy as a sort of a frame of reference to the changes that we've made. And we've got one left, the benediction. In the benediction, again, we see an active God engaged in a dialogue with his people. And through that dialogue and our actions that are in response to his actions, we are shaped in particular ways to be the people of God. The benediction is God's word of grace spoken over us. I was in a modern evangelical church once, and the MC, maybe it was an off-the-cuff decision, decided that the congregation should read the words of the benediction in unison. That was the wrong decision. By doing this, the people of God took his words away from him. We kind of dismissed him and said, take a seat. We got this. I know that the MC had no idea that he was doing this. To him it seemed natural. And that's because it is natural for us to live as if there is no supernatural. Our notions of reality and our liturgies have been shaped by the notions of our culture. And the church is supposed to be the place where this kind of thing is resisted, not complied with. The MC just had no idea what the benediction was. And herein lies the problem. If we are going to have a benediction, and we should, everyone with a mic and everyone on the service planning team needs to know what one is. And maybe we should also tell the congregants what it is as well. It's not just a way of closing the proceedings on a religious note, during which we put our coats on and gather up our things in preparation for our departure. The benediction is a blessing, and it comes from scripture. It's the word of God. And that's why in many churches, the benediction can only be given by an ordained pastor. These are God's words. Some churches appropriately call the benediction sending. Notice that it's not called going or leaving. These are things that we do. This final part of the liturgy is about something that God does. He blesses and he sends. It's fitting, isn't it? The liturgy starts with God and it ends with him. He calls us into worship and now he sends us out into the world. Our modern culture has a very different worldview than the one we find in scripture. The modern worldview doesn't believe that reality or humanity have a spiritual dimension. In our culture, we have decided that it's fine to have religious beliefs, but you should keep them enclosed in a box that you label private. We tend to think that the mind is distinct from the heart, and both of these are distinct from the body, and of course the soul is distinct from all of them. We have this belief that you have to choose between faith and reason, and that science and religion say the opposite things. The Bible disagrees with all of these. And the benediction is a place where all these are countered in the church service. The benediction sends us out with our heads screwed on straight. Think about it. We have encountered an act of God throughout the worship service, and we are now sent out into the world with his blessing. We bear the blessing of the creator of everything that is, physical and spiritual. And this blessing covers all of us, not just every one of us, but every part of each of us. He is the Lord of our hearts and minds and souls and bodies. He is the Lord of our lives, our work and play and family and friendships and everything that we do and say and think and feel. The benediction signifies that our whole lives are covered by his grace. In the benediction, God says, go, 
Do the work for which I have equipped and called you. Be the person that I made you to be. The benediction blurs the lines between our worship in the church and our worship in the world. The benediction is a declaration that the two are inseparable. Life is worship, and worship is life. This sending is a big deal. It frames what we do all week. Everything we do is as a sent person. Church might be a Sunday thing, but through the Sunday liturgy, we have been called and equipped and sent by the sovereign seven days a week, 24 hours a day God, to do his work in the world, to be his hands and feet. What could be done to make this sending a little bit clearer to the congregation so that the benediction does this to them, shapes them into this kind of people? Discuss. This is the end of this series, but I will be certainly making a video about how we might turn communion and baptism back toward God and away from our cultural idols. So please like and subscribe. I would hate for you to miss that one. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.